All right, let's talk about the geography of Greece for a second. What we have in front of us here is a map of ancient Greece. Um, you can see that there are many different regions here. It's not just the Balkan Peninsula. Truly, Greece itself is maybe the size of Louisiana. It was much smaller than the counterparts we've been discussing. Um, Egypt, Mesopotamia, India, China, much larger than the physical space and physical geography of the Greeks. But the, the significance of the Greek civilizations does not necessarily have to do with its geographic size, but the size and the space that it colonized and that it influenced around the eastern Mediterranean Sea. Um, again, if you look at the map, you can see some of the city-states that we're going to be discussing this unit. Athens, Delphi, Thebes, Corinth, now Corinth is actually, um, although the city-state here, it also represents the small little isthmus that connects these two parts of the, of the peninsula. Um, we have the mainland peninsula and then you have the Peloponnesian peninsula, which will definitely be coming into play later when we discuss the Greek wars. I um, really want to bring your attention to Sparta, one of the largest and most influential city-states of the Peloponnesian peninsula. Um, also you have Macedonia here in the northern region, um, Asia Minor, which is going to be conquered by the Persians and it's going to be one of the things leading to the Persian Wars between the Greeks and Persians. The Black Sea, which is connecting Europe to Asia. Um, and then this little strait of water right through here, this is called the Dardanelles, um, for the Greeks were traders. That's what they did, that's what they were masters of and their shipping and trading through the Black Sea to the Aegean Sea um, through the Dardanelles. We'll discuss Troy um, briefly when we discuss Homer and the Mycenaeans. So the legendary city of Troy we believe to be here in this part of Asia Minor. I'm going to go ahead and skip to looking a little more specifically at the general masses, the general water of the geography. Um, you need to know four different seas you need to know the Ionian Sea to the west of Greece. You need to know the Mediterranean Sea, which is kind of south of the, these major um, islands and land masses of Europe and Asia. You need to know the Aegean Sea, which is the body of water that is in between mainland Greece and Asia Minor. And like I was saying, the Black Sea and then the Dardanelles that feed into it. This long island right here, this is called the island of Crete. We'll be discussing more of that when we discuss um, our early Greek civilizations. If we're looking at the um, peninsula and we're looking at Greece, then we're looking at mountains. Um, Greece is known for their very, very high, rigid, strict mountain ranges, which really feeds into the development of the city-states. If you look here, you can see it's all mountainous. Um, the city-states that develop are going to have to find pockets within the valleys or along the coastal lowlands to be able to fit their polis. Um, most of them are not going to be on the highest peaks. When I'm trying to discuss the high peaks of these mountain ranges, look to see the height. These Greek mountain ranges are almost 7,000 to 10,000 feet in height. To compare that, our own Massanutten Mountain isn't even 3,000 feet. And the highest points of the Blue Ridge Mountain are somewhere between three to 5,000 feet. So very, very high, very steep, um, not gently sloping mountains, which create a problem. You're not going to see the great Greek empire the way that we see Rome or Egypt. The city-states of Greece develop independently and separately from each other. They were very competitive and often led to war between the different groups because they're fighting for resources. And once they develop these city-states and take advantage of the resources on mainland Greece, that's one of the reasons trade and then colonization becomes so important to the Greek city-states. They just don't have enough room and resources for their people. So they're going to start colonizing and trading throughout the eastern Mediterranean and then as far over west as what we consider to be the Italian-Roman Republic. Um, the island of Sicily and southern Italian peninsula are heavily colonized by the Greeks but we'll discuss more of that later.